Yo, what up guys, I'm Sammy and welcome back to the Soul Brothers channel. And this is my first impressions look on the Puma Rise Nitro. So this shoe is going for $125. And uh, yeah, it looks amazing. It looks very futuristic. And there's two colorways available on Puma.com right now. This Volt colorway and also a really cool orange colorway. So if you guys do want to cop, I'll try to leave an affiliate link in the description box. But let's get it started off with the Tractionese. And as far as the traction pattern goes, we have like a wave-like herringbone traction pattern pretty much uh, throughout this entire outsole. And we have a Puma cat logo here in the heel. And also, as you guys can see here in the middle of the outsole, we can see what they're calling the Pro Plate. So it's basically a midfoot shank plate. And uh, it's very exposed here in the middle of the outsole. It looks like an X. And it also kind of looks like the Curry 10. You know, if you guys have seen the Curry 10 outsole, it, it's kind of like the same thing, right? But uh, I feel like it extends all the way here into the forefoot. It probably does actually, you know, uh, judging from the outline here in the forefoot on the outsole. Um, but anyways, as far as the bite goes on my wood floor, it doesn't seem that good. The bite just, yeah, it's just kind of eh. And it reminds me a lot of the TRC Blaze Court right now. And, and I'm playing that shoe right now and the traction isn't that good so far. So hopefully that's not the case here in the Rise Nitro, but it's not feeling too good here on my wood floors. Of course, that can all change because, you know, the finish on my floor is a little bit different than the finish, of course, on a basketball court. Uh, but we'll have to see on that. And as far as the durability goes, durability feels like it's gonna be super bad. You know, uh, it's a very soft rubber and the grooves are super thin. So I don't think it'll be very good on an outdoor court. So that definitely does suck as well. So the traction, of course, uh, for me personally, traction is super important. If a traction is bad and everything about a basketball shoe is amazing, like the cushion, fit, material, support, and all that, but the traction is bad, then I'm not gonna like it, you know? So hopefully the traction is good because everything else about this shoe is feeling pretty nice so far. And uh, moving on to the heel to toe transition. So it feels overall very, very smooth, right? So here in the heel, we have a nice curved shape. And look at this, fully, fully exposed nitro foam in the heel, look at that. And it's super soft, I like how it feels so far. And then here in the forefoot, we have a nice curved shape and a good amount of forefoot flex, look at that. You know, right where the forefoot is, you know, <laughs> where the actual foot flexes, which is super nice. And then here in the midfoot, not a whole lot of flex because of this pro plate. So overall heel to toe transition uh, feels very smooth. And from the cushion, it feels nice. Uh, it does seem like there is a little bit of bounce back, like a little bit. And then uh, of course we have the pro plate, which will of course give a little bit of, you know, bounciness when you're doing heel dominant strides. Uh, for transitions so that overall feels really good so far moving on to the cushioning setup so the cushioning setup is really really nice we got full length nitro foam and it says nitro here in the back of the heel and look at how exposed it is guys it's super exposed and it really doesn't have any type of caging which i absolutely love and even this cage right here right this gray part that's not like a plastic it's actually the foam that extends up and it's probably yeah, it looks like it's part of the nitro foam as well, right? So here in the heel, there's a lot of compression. It's super soft and nitro foam is very soft, right? It's not super bouncy. I mean, there is a little bit of rebound back, but not as bouncy as like Boom or React Foam from Nike or of course Zoom. I mean, Zoom is the bounciest, but anyways, uh, it's super soft. I like how it feels so far and step in comfort feels pretty nice because the insole is very nice and Puma usually gives us very, very nice plush foam insoles. So I like that. It definitely does improve the step in comfort, but if you look underneath the insole, there is a pretty stiff strobe board. So um, uh, hopefully that breaks in, but we'll have to see on that. I would love to feel the nitro foam right underneath my foot. And I just like the Wild 10, you know what I mean? Please companies, do what Leaning did with the Wild 10 and give us a mesh trouble board so that we have really, really good step in comfort. I absolutely love that system and what they did in the Wild 10. But anyways, uh, also as far as the court feel goes, here in the forefoot, it feels pretty good, but here in the heel, it gets a little bit high. So there definitely is a little bit of an offset as well. I mean, as you guys can see, the heel is pretty thick, like she thick here in the back. So uh, yeah, I'm liking the cushion overall. It doesn't feel like it's gonna be super responsive though. Hopefully it's not too soft or mushy feeling. Uh, it doesn't feel like it's going to be, but uh, right now it feels pretty damn soft. So uh, maybe it'll, you know, bottom out a little bit and we'll have
have to see on all of that, but I am a little bit worried about responsiveness, but overall it's super comfortable and very, very soft. All right, moving on to the material. So we have an engineered knit and it's pretty much like a shroud, right? Look at this. Uh, it's a shroud that goes over this entire material and it's such a nice feeling knit. The quality is absolutely amazing. And um, yeah, for 125 bucks, like this is great quality material. And also they're giving us full length nitrofoam. You know what I mean? Like that. I love what they're doing here in this shoe. So here in the forefoot, like in the middle of the toe box, it's a super stretchy knit. I am a little bit worried about support though. You know, uh, just because, you know, this knit is super stretchy. I mean, they did add the power tape, right? There is power tape here on the lateral side and also the medial side of the shoe to reinforce uh, the, this like super soft knit material. And I guess it maybe it works, but it still feels like there's a little bit of stretch to it. You know, I feel like it's, they should have fused it up a little bit more on the sides. I mean, I guess they did, but we'll have to see how good the support is. Uh, but yeah, it just feels so nice because it like, stretches over your foot. Uh, one thing that I absolutely don't like about this shoe though is lacing this shoe up. You know what I mean? So th like this, this knit is super stretchy, right? Uh, but when when I try to lace, <laughs> lace this shoe up, I can barely get to like the third eyelet, right? I can tighten up the first, I guess like the last two eyelets right here. That's super easy. But going to like the third or fourth eyelet is super annoying. And it's just really hard and you can't really flip this down either. So I, I, I wish they would have like cut cut it a little bit here. I don't know, but it's just annoying to lace up. And you know, if it gets loose here in the midfoot and also kind of like in the forefoot, how are you supposed to lace it up? You know what I mean? So that's definitely very, very annoying, uh, but it feels really nice on foot as far as the knit goes. And then here in the back of the shoe for the tongue, we have a very nice plush tongue. There is a lot of padding, which feels very cozy and very comfortable. And here in the ankle area, there's a crazy amount of padding as well. So this shoe is very cozy. It does feel a little bulky though, as far as the overall material goes, especially in the back of the heel. Uh, definitely here in the forefoot and midfoot, there, it's not super bulky, it's actually pretty minimal uh, but in the back of the shoe it feels a little bit bulky just because there's so much foam and so much padding and that can be a good or bad thing of course if you want a super minimal upper uh, this probably isn't the best option but if you want a very comfortable upper then obviously that's a very good thing and then here on the lateral side of the shoe we have like this plastic uh, for the Puma logo and this also feels like it reinforces the material as well so yeah this material is a one I absolutely love it and it feels super nice on foot uh, uh, moving on to the fit, I went true to size. It's a super duper snug fit, right? So lengthwise, my toes are pretty much right at the edge of the shoe. So if you don't like that, I would suggest going up half a size. I feel like most people will be bothered by that. I mean, I really like it just because I like a super snug fit lengthwise. Uh, but if you don't like that, I'll probably suggest going up half a size for like a majority of the people. Uh, also here in the toe box, it's super snug as well. Uh, but I feel like this knit material will stretch out over time, you know, just because it's not glued down at all. It's super stretchy. Uh, so it'll probably get roomier once I break it in and play in it a lot. And also for the width, I would say it's uh, slightly narrow. It's not super narrow or anything, especially comparing it to some of the shoes that I'm playing, like the Shock, the Game 6.0 and the KT Splash 4. Those are super narrow. These are not as narrow, but uh, it's, it is squeezing my foot just a tiny bit, especially with this stretchy knit upper, which feels great. So it's a very nice and snug fit. I absolutely love it. And if you want a very snug fit, probably go true to size. If you want more of like a, a relaxed fit, you know, or like maybe a little bit roomier, then probably go up half a size. Uh, as far as the support and lockdown goes, it feels, or I mean, it looks like it's gonna be very good. You know, looking at the lateral side of the shoe, of course we have what they're calling the power tape. You know, we have that going along the lateral side. I mean, you don't really need any type of support here on the medial side all too much, but here on the lateral side you do. Uh, but like I said, I don't know how much this does, right? But if you look at the actual lateral counters, uh, this Puma logo, this plastic definitely does reinforce the material. The foam comes up here like like in the midfoot and also here in the forefoot, a good amount actually. So that'll definitely help for lateral containment. And here in the heel, we have an internal TPU heel counter. So it looks good on paper, but we'll have to see how supportive this actual knit material is. Hopefully it doesn't like roll over on itself, you know? As far as the weight goes, okay, so that's one thing that I definitely felt about this shoe. It feels a little bit on the heavier side. It doesn't feel super heavy though. I'm guessing like 13 ounces maybe. Um, 12.59 ounces. Oh, it's like average weight. Let's check the other pair. 12.77 ounces. So average like 
12.6 ounces or something. Uh, so that's definitely average weight. I mean, uh, Nitro Foam definitely isn't super light. And I've been uh, telling Puma to do this for a while now. Nitro Foam isn't like the lightest foam. You know what I mean? If you if you look at Nike, they make super light density foams like React, Lunalon. They're just super lightweight. And if you look at any shoe, uh, mo a majority of the weight comes from the actual midsole and also the outsole of the shoe, right? Um, so I feel like, you know, Puma should do some R&D. And if you look at the uh, TRC Blaze Core, that shoe has uh, the Pro Foam Plus, which is super light density, right? You know, like the MB1 with the full-length Nitro Foam, it's like on the heavier side of things, right? So I feel like if they use like React Foam uh, from Nike, this definitely would have been a lot lighter. But yeah, I mean, it definitely, like if here in the heel, it definitely feels a little bit bulky just because there's a lot of foam, right? Um, but overall, not super bulky and um, it feels super comfortable on foot. But also, like I said, uh, the amount of foam here in the back of the shoe definitely makes it feel a little bit bulky, especially comparing to shoes that have a very minimal feel like the Curry 9, uh, the PG6 and stuff like that. But, you know, they're just different, right? So if you want a cozy upper, this will be better. Moving on to the aesthetics, it looks absolutely amazing. It has a very minimalistic design, right? Like covering up the laces definitely helps with that. And also like the minimal design for the logo and also like the power tape it just it looks awesome this volt color is super bright i i feel like i kind of regret getting this colorway i feel like i would have liked the orange colorway a little bit better but uh, aesthetically whoever designed this did a great job and i absolutely love how it looks so tell us what you guys think of the aesthetics down in the comment section below so wrapping things up this shoe is uh, looking pretty damn good you know i like the overall quality of everything right it's built well i love the knit material super comfortable uh, i love the cushioning setup as well uh, but the traction, the traction is, is worrying me a little bit. Hopefully it breaks in and gets nice, but we'll have to see on that. And also I am a little bit worried about the support of this knit material. Just because look at this. It's like, it, it, it just stays super stretchy throughout this entire upper. You know what I mean? Like I feel like they should have made it like less stretchy here. You know what I mean? So of course we all have yet to see on those things, but overall my first impressions of the shoe are on the positive side of things and I am pretty damn excited to try it out. But anyways, that about concludes my first impressions on the Puma Rise Nitro. Again, if you guys don't want to call up, I'll try to leave an affiliate link in the description box, but that's it. Thank you guys for watching and I'll see you guys in the next one.